what is the difference between the theoretical yield and the actual yield when someone runs a chemical change? Well, first of all, you have to know what the word yield means. Yield is the amount of product that's produced across the chemical change. And the theoretical yield is the amount of product produced that you calculate from the stoichiometric relationships. And the actual yield is the amount you actually make and, and you can measure in the lab after performing the experiment. So let's look at an example of comparing the theoretical yield versus the actual yield. If someone ran this um, experiment um, burning butane in, in oxygen, the combustion of butane, how many grams of carbon dioxide are formed when 55.5 grams of butane reacts with 45.5 grams of oxygen? Well, first of all, you need to recognize that the theoretical yield is going to be at the amount that you calculate, and you have to be able to do the calculation correctly. We see here that we are starting with a certain amount of um, each reactant, so we have to decide first which is the limiting reactant um, because uh, we're probably going to have an excess of the other. And to figure that out, you can just um, start with what's given and run a theoretical calculation across um, the chemical change for each one of the given uh, reactants. In this case, we have 55.5 grams of butane and we have 45.5 grams of oxygen given. Now there's a variety of different ways to figure out limiting reagent, but probably the easiest way is just to make an assumption. Assume that you have plenty of oxygen, calculate how much carbon dioxide would be formed from the given butane, then do a, repeat the calculation, only assume you have plenty of ox, excuse me, plenty of butane, and you have 45.5 grams of oxygen, and calculate how much carbon dioxide will be formed. Whichever gives you the less amount is going to be the amount of uh, product that you form. So in this case, if we start 55 grams of butane and we want to convert to grams of carbon dioxide, we're going to use our stoichiometric coefficients to convert between moles of butane and moles of carbon dioxide. So in order to get to moles, we have to use the molar mass first to convert from grams of butane to moles of butane. The molar mass of butane is 58 about 58 grams per mole. I'll put the gram unit on the bottom of my calculation so that I can um, cancel out the gram unit and I'm now in units of moles. Then I used my stoichiometric relationship, 8 moles of carbon dioxide for every 2 moles of butane um, consumed and now I'm in moles of the product. Then I convert back to grams of product using the molar mass of carbon dioxide and I get when I do the calculation I get um, 168 grams of carbon dioxide that sounds a bit high especially since I started with way less uh, product pretty much impossible so let's go through and see how much uh, carbon dioxide I form if I assume I have 45.5 grams of oxygen and plenty of butane. So first of all, I'm going to convert to um, from mole, uh, I need to get from into moles of oxygen so I can get to moles of carbon dioxide. So I will use the molar mass of oxygen, 32 grams of oxygen per one mole of oxygen to convert to the mole unit. Then I'll use my um, stoichiometry, eight moles of carbon dioxide for every 13 moles of oxygen consumed and then I'm going to get back into grams of carbon dioxide using the molar mass of carbon dioxide, one mole of carbon dioxide. We'll cancel the unit there and then the answer here is 38.5 grams of carbon dioxide. Whichever gave me the least amount is the amount I make, therefore the oxygen is the limiting reagent. Um, and I say that my theoretical yield, because this was all from calculation, is 38.5 grams of carbon dioxide. The actual yield, I would have to go into the lab and do the experiment. And when I actually did the experiment, I ended up with 30 grams of carbon dioxide. So the question is, first of all, why only 30 if the theoretically said I should get 38.5? Well, lots of things can happen. Some gas can leak out, you can spill, um, you can have error in your um, measurements originally. Um, you can also have side reactions. And in the case of the combustion of butane, I could imagine that as I start running out of oxygen, 
I start having incomplete combustion and have a side reaction forming carbon monoxide. So all kinds of things can happen to limit your yield below the theoretical yield. But many people uh, report then when they do an, a chemical experiment or a chemical reaction, um, it's not necessarily an experiment, it's just running a reaction, I should say, um, the percent yield, which is the um, actual yield, how much you actually measured that you got, divided by the theoretical yield, if everything went perfectly, um, what you should have gotten, times 100%. And in this case, it's 30 grams divided by 38.5 grams. Let's see, let's write a little neater. 30 grams divided by 38.5 grams times 100% um, equals 78% yield. Not too bad.